Hey, welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Raspad 3. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick, before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got going on here. I've got the Raspad still in the box, and we are going to be looking at this together today. And then in addition to that, I've got uh, a Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gig model. I've got a few extra bits and bobs in here that we're not going to need. We really just need the board itself, to the best of my knowledge. And I've also went ahead and flashed the Raspad OS. So that's one thing about the Raspad. It does take its own operating system that's available on their website. And that OS is built on top of Raspbian Buster, if I'm not mistaken. So let's get the Raspberry Pi out of the way and let's go ahead and take a look in the box. So, first thing we got is a user's manual, and yeah, I'm probably not going to use that right now unless we run into a jam. A little piece of foam to help separate things out, and I apologize for crinkling plastic, but that's kind of what we get when we do these unboxings. And looks like we got a bit of plastic across the screen. We'll get that uh, off in a second. I apologize for that glare, uh, but this is the Raspad itself. Uh, we can see right there on this end, we've got all of our ports available to us uh, that we're going to need. And on the other side, we've got, uh, let's see, looks like a brightness or maybe volume buttons. We've got a power button and then we've got the micro SD slot. So that's the Raspad itself. Let's see, what else is underneath here? All right, so it looks like we've got uh, at least part of a power cable. I bet this is the rest of, yep, that's the rest of that power cable. Now this is one thing that does concern me about this, uh, is about this device, and that's charging it up. The output power on this uh, charger is 15 volts at two amps. Uh, and that's pretty high to be recharging this device. I'll have to play with this a little bit, see what kind of battery life we get out of it and how this might uh, work for us in the field. Uh, you know, how long will those batteries last? Could we do a short soda activation uh, with it? I believe they claim uh, four hours worth of battery life, but again, we'll have to test that uh, after we get everything put together. Now we've got some additional cables here. Let's take a look at these. And that looks like uh, cables just so we can relocate some things. I can't seem to be able to get one of those out of there. There we go. So those are some cables to relocate some things. Uh, let's see, what else do we have over here? Yep, this is going to be an SD card uh, 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 ribbon cable so we can relocate the SD card. And I'm not really sure what this guy is. So we'll have to, uh, I may have to actually dig into the user's manual to figure that out. Uh, in addition to that, we've got a screwdriver, we've got some heat sinks and some screws, and we've got a little fan. So let me get some of this cleaned up, and then we'll go ahead and start breaking into that case and try to get some of this put together. Okay, so now that we kind of got some of the excess stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and crack open this case and see if we can figure out how to get the Pi installed in here and get all the appropriate cables hooked up. I will say it is nice that they include everything you need, including, oop, and that is not good. I'm going to have to chase that screw down. But they do include uh, everything you need, including a screwdriver. Now that we've got the back off of it, I was taking a look at this battery, and that looks like, uh, let's see if we can get that into frame, maybe for you guys. I'm not sure if I can zoom that in enough for you guys to be able to read that or not. Um, but, well, I might have that actually upside down for you. Uh, but you'll see that that is 18650 uh, batteries running at 11.1 .1 volts. And we get about 3200 milliamp hours off of that battery or 3.2 amp hours. 
go ahead and open up this new Raspberry Pi, pop this guy out, and let's see how we're going to line everything up in here. It looks like uh, we should probably point uh, all of the output for the Raspberry Pi towards the daughter board of this, and it looks like we're going to need four screws to hold everything down, and I'm betting that's one of the things that's included in this little package here. And I already see a mistake that it looks like I've made, probably because I didn't bother to read the directions. But before you screw this uh, Pi down, you probably want to go ahead and insert this uh, SD card adapter so that it'll, uh, with the ribbon cable, so that it moves everything out to this end board over here. Now it looks like everything will line up pretty well for us. Okay, so now that I've got uh, most of the primary cabling in place, you'll see that uh, everything routes around very neatly. One thing we may have to be concerned with is uh, this USB power, USB-C uh, power cable. Make sure it doesn't get in the way of this particular screw here. But we got both HDMI uh, ports from the Raspberry Pi connected into this daughter board. And they've done a very nice job with this kit. Uh, I like the way uh, all of the cables are the appropriate size. So you can see that this one comes out uh, far enough uh, around this one that we get a very nice routing of the cable. So well done in that regard. Okay, so I did have to shut off the camera for a second and actually open up the uh, owner's manual. I could not figure out what this little guy was right here, and it turns out that is the accelerometer. So when we rotate the tablet, uh, the, the image on the screen will rotate accordingly. So I went ahead and installed the accelerometer and the heat sinks. So just a couple of things left here. We've got to uh, install the ribbon cable for the micro SD card, and then we also need to install the fan. Okay, so I did go ahead and install the fan on the back of this thing. I plugged the fan into the daughter board over here, and I went ahead and attached the ribbon cable to uh, this other daughter board so that we can have access to the micro SD card without having to crack the case back open. Uh, I've got all of the uh, heat sinks installed over here. So it looks like I'm just about uh, ready to wrap this thing up. Need to close it up, and then we're going to take a look at going ahead and booting it. Now, one thing, if you're not familiar with these uh, ribbon uh, cables here, there is a little black component on the back of uh, this slot for the ribbon cable. You do need to pull that up as you're putting the cable in or out. So uh, you pull up, slide your cable in, and then you press down on, that, uh, on the black portion of this, and that goes ahead and locks that ribbon cable into place. So give me a couple of seconds here. Let's see if I can get this thing buttoned up, and uh, we'll go ahead and fire this thing up for the first time and take a look at it. Now, earlier in the video, you saw me with that Raspad OS uh, envelope that I had. Well, I need to update you guys on this. They have actually discontinued or dropped support for the Raspad OS itself, and I didn't realize that, and I actually ran into several issues trying to get this thing up and running. It was only after reading through the forums that I understood they had dropped the Raspad OS itself. Now, you just need to load a standard version of Buster onto the SD card, and then they also offer a Raspad launcher through GitHub that you'll want to go ahead and get installed if you want to use it in a true touchscreen fashion. You'll see in just a second when we jump over to the Raspad that I am not using it in that capacity. I did not load the launcher onto it because my plan is to go ahead and load build on this device so that I can use it with some of the radios when we're in the field. But let's go ahead and jump over and take a look at what we have so far. Okay, so here we are with the device booted up, and you can see that I've just got it booted into a plain Buster image. Uh, everything is functioning correctly. The uh, mouse will function. The touchscreen all functions uh, perfectly. Now, since I did not install the Raspad OS launcher, there was no keyboard installed on this. So I did have to go and install Matchbox keyboard. That was pretty simple, but now if we touch on the Raspberry Pi uh, menu system and come down to accessories and we click on keyboard, you'll see that the keyboard opens up and functions as it should. 
Uh, so you do have an on-screen keyboard here that we can use. The Wi-Fi is working perfectly. So we have a functioning tablet at this point. The only thing that I have not gotten to function and I just haven't dug into it far enough is the accelerometer. So if I rotate it or uh, something like that, the screen is not going to rotate as it should. That's something I'll probably dig into uh, a little bit later so that uh, I can have that functionality with it. So what are my plans going forward with the Raspad? Well, it's a very slick little device. I love that it's an all-in-one unit, including the batteries. Speaking of batteries, I do need to do some testing to see exactly how long these batteries are going to last. Now, SunFounder claims four to five hours of battery life, but I'm sure that's under ideal conditions. When we get it out into the sun and we need to run the screen at full brightness, uh, and we're doing other things with it, whether we're running JS8 Call or WinLink, how's that all going to affect the battery life? If I could just get this thing to match up with something like the 817 or the uh, internal battery for the ICOM 705, that might be perfect if you just wanted to go out uh, in an afternoon and do maybe a soda activation or a short poda activation. So I could see this being an ideal little device for that. I don't really anticipate any issues when it comes to running build a -Pie on top of this. Uh, I, I really can't think of anything that would present us any problems. One uh, thing that I don't like about it so far, and that's the on-screen keyboard. It seems a little bit fiddly to me uh, and not quite as easy to type on as, say, the keyboard on your phone. Now, that's no fault of the tablet itself. Uh, I think that's just a fault of the Matchbox keyboard. But that is one thing that we would uh, need to take into consideration. You could always plug up uh, either an external USB keyboard or you could take a wireless uh, keyboard with you as well to give you a better typing experience if that was something that bugged you. It would really depend on how much I was going to be doing on this device while I was out. If it was a short little outing, I would probably go ahead and just tolerate the on-screen keyboard. If I was trying to use it uh, in a longer duration event, then I'm probably going to go with an external keyboard. But it is a really, really sharp little device. So give me a bit more time with it and we'll see where it goes going forward. I've got several other projects on my plate. I did want to get an initial review out of this device, but it may be a little bit before I have a chance to load build a pie on it and do some testing with an actual radio connected. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you on the next video. Until then, 7-3.